Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Ms. Vinanti Makasare, GS of College of Physiotherapy, Neeraj Medical Center, Wanderers Hospital. Uh, I take pleasure in introducing the most inspiring and the dynamic personality, the guest speaker of today's webinar on telehealth, a new dawn for healthcare, that is Dr. Ambarish Akre, sir. He is the founder and the CEO at PhysioEd. He has perceived his BPT, MPT, CMP, COMT from Australia and MIAP. He has the master's degree in musculoskeletal and sports physiotherapy from KLE Institute, Verga, under the RGUHS. He is a certified Mulligan Cancer Practitioner. He is an internationally certified COMT in spinal and peripheral joint mobilizations from prestigious Melbourne University, Australia. He is a certified McConnell Cancer Practitioner and has learned it from Jenny McConnell herself. He is a certified kinesiotaping practitioner and internationally certified ergonomist. Dr. Ambarish Sir is a recipient of the Care Hero Best Employee Award in his company for the New South Wales State, Australia in 2020. Sir has the clinical experience of 16 years which include 10 years as an academician too. So it has been an examiner and guided thousands of students in various universities in India, like RGUHS, Bangalore, Pravara Loni, SNDT and DY Patil Mumbai, MUHS is also one of the universities. Sir so has organized and led many successful camps across Maharashtra and Gujarat. He is an author of many internationally published research articles as well. He continues to upgrade his skills by doing continuous hands-on and virtual education through multiple universities and bodies in Australia, namely University of Melbourne, University of Tasmania, Lung Foundation and Stroke Foundation of Australia. Sir is currently a site lead working as a clinical physiotherapist in geriatrics in Sydney, Australia. Sir aims to use his diverse experience for the benefit of physios across the globe, mainly India. His aim is to help the physiotherapist across the globe to have easier access to eminent clinically skilled resource professionals. We are very fortunate to have you, sir, with us today for this webinar. We welcome you, sir. And now I would request our principal, sir, to hand it over to sir to initiate and start with the webinar. I'll hand it over now to principal, sir. Thank you, Vinanti. Uh, I warm <coughs> welcome to Dr. Amri Shakre, uh, friend, colleague, and a very great academician, and of course, the wonderful physiotherapist. And uh, today he will be guiding us and we'll be taking a webinar on importance of teleria, but on in the healthcare. Uh, I welcome you, Dr. Amrish, and I request you kindly to begin with the session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ronald, a very good friend and colleague over the last 20, 21 years. Uh, I firstly take the opportunity to thank Dr. Ronald and the College of Physiotherapy, One List Hospital, Neeraj, to give me this opportunity. It's always good to interact with students and I hope by the end of the session there will be some difference uh, in the way uh, the students understand what telehealth is and uh, I would like it to be more a communication or a sort of a discussion rather than me taking a PowerPoint presentation because it's afternoon time and we don't want anyone to be sleeping here so I would still request people to turn on the cameras if it's possible because that's, uh, you know, you don't want people to be sleeping. So I get a direct feedback how interesting or boring the session is. Okay, so I'll be sharing the screen now. Just let me know if it's uh, the presentation is uh, visible to everyone. Uh, is it all right? Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Anandhi. Yeah, so the topic itself tells you what the session is about. It's about telehealth, and we call it as a new dawn of the healthcare. So I've taken this session uh, maybe a couple of weeks back at the IIP Mumbai, and the feedback and the response was really nice. 
Uh, hence, I decided like maybe one or two sessions, I will still continue with the same topic because they were, there are still audiences who would like to know a bit about it as in telehealth is something which is not going to go away now. And one of the main reasons for that is COVID. Okay, so we don't know where the COVID is going to go away. We always will keep it in control. Uh, we had the first wave, we had the second wave. We still have the second wave in Australia. We've locked down since last three months. So we don't know how things are going to go ahead. Now, what healthcare has done is in the last one and a half year, if you realize there has been a tremendous increase in the number of tele consultations or what I can say there has been a tremendous increase in the number of uh, tele courses like virtual courses so you yourself know like last one and a half year the amount of webinars which are conducted by various bodies across India and the globe has increased so that's been an uh, indirect blessing for the healthcare system and that's the purpose of the webinar okay so let me first get into what do we mean by telehealth so the word itself tells you telehealth. So you're talking about a health consultation. In our case, it's going to be a physio consultation and it's going to be done by a virtual platform. That is, you're going to have audio visual communication and the physio and the patient will not be co-located. So they'll be not at the same place. They'll be at different places. And as I can say, it can happen that the physio is at one place and all the other patients are at one place if it's a group session or it can also happen that the physio is one place and all the other patients also at different places so it's it's like a you know multiple uh, virtual uh, what you can say consultation so to keep it simple uh, the purpose of this guidance we'll call this as a video consultation so it is just like how we are talking now you're talking most of us are in Miraj and I'm in Sydney so it happens like a virtual webinar here so telehealth consultation is almost like a virtual webinar okay so obviously there's a bit of difference now example if I'm talking to you guys you want me to be visible firstly you want me to be clear loud and it has to be thorough. So you don't want any audio disturbances. You don't want any network issues. You don't want any technical background disturbance. For example, I should have a clear background behind me. I should not be having something which is going to disturb you. Okay. So I can't sit in front of a balcony showing you the scenery behind when I'm talking because that's going to disturb you. Okay. So even with a telehealth consultation, it has to be of high quality in terms of your assessment. Uh, your clarification of diagnosis, your recommendation of treatment, your review, what you want to do. And it should be clearly communicated to the best practice models of care. Okay. So many times the understanding what many people have told me is that you can simply connect to WhatsApp video call and the physio and the patient can talk. Well, the idea is sounds all right, but uh, that's not actually permissible. You're not supposed to do it that way. So it has to be a technically, uh, what I can say, well set up atmosphere. That is even the physio and the patient should make sure there's no disturbance behind them. It should be a sort of a, what I can say, um, a non uh, disturbed atmosphere, or it should be a, what I can say, a very clear atmosphere in terms of vision and in terms of audibility. So both the physio and the patient should be clearly audible to each other and visible to each other as well. Okay. So before we decide how the consultation goes ahead, obviously the most important part is to determine is everyone suited for telehealth? And the answer for that is straight away no. Not everyone is suited for telehealth. So example, if you have a patient who has some hearing deficit or has some vision impairment, that person is not suitable for a, what I can say, telehealth consultation. Also what we would say is if a person is having, if a patient is having, if it's a neuro patient is having balance issues, that person is also not suited for a tele rehab consultation because you want that person to be safe. You don't want the person to do some exercise in front of you, putting himself or herself at a you know, risk for a fall. So not everyone is suited for a telehealth consultation. And hence what we say, before you offer a consultation, you should be having a sort of a mock call, what do you call it? A mock call is a dummy call in which the physio understands whether the patient is ideally suited for the consultation or is at say uh, at a risk 
maybe at a fall or maybe hurting oneself or maybe misunderstanding the exercises because you might be showing something else to the patient do some sort of exercise at your end but if the patient is performing trick movements there because in as msk physios you must have realized many times if you say seeing a adhesive capsulitis patient now adhesive capsulitis patient if he is going to do a lot of trick movements in a tele rehab session you might actually not get any difference there because you are not able to isolate the movement you're not able to control the scapula with your hands it's more like a tele rehab so these patients have to be actually we really screened properly that are you are they going to be suitable for the session or you're not going to achieve anything much so it has to be very well planned okay so what i said is the example which i gave like adhesive capsulitis you have to consider the client's capacity to participate and uh, before you offer the session so it it may be in terms of understanding so in australia we have a lot of demented uh, patients a lot of dementia cognition issues here so they are not suitable for tele rehab and in india if you say the person is hypertensive then you have to be careful you can't take a hypertensive patient for a cardiac rehab on a tele uh, rehab consultation because if the vitals shoot up you should be having a backup plan for the emergency services to be provided because if the patient is alone and you start giving the patient some sort of a circuit exercise in terms of you know improving the cardiac output there at the patient then you must also take into account what if the vitals shoot up is there any emergency care provided so that has to be very you know very well considered you just can't take anyone on a tele rehab session so i already talked about it a uh, video consultation uh, a patient should not be having any visual or hearing impairment and uh, you should already be checking all the lines like you know in terms of your network your wifi your background setting if any uh, appropriate services uh, should be you know uh, uh, needed for the session like a referral line and the client ideally should also be providing you some sort of a consent now in india maybe consent taking is not given that much amount of uh, what i can say due importance but any overseas country not only australia but any overseas country whether it's europe or us they have a what you can say a consent taking which is really important part whether it's a you know face to face session or whether it's tele rehab i think tele rehab it's more important because you want to be safe these countries are very you know any overseas country if you have any sort of a mishap or any injury happening you can be in trouble so a uh, written consent uh, written consent is also many times required if you find the patient may be at risk for you know some undue or uh, any situation which you cannot control from your end because you want to sit thousands of kilometers away so you won't be able to control the session if anything goes wrong so you have to keep yourself safe as well so for that it can be a informal consent or many a times if you feel it's not safe you can also go for a written consent so written consent can be like a ms word document or a gmail communication with the patient saying that the patient is aware what are the you know drawbacks of the session and he or she is fully responsible if there's any mishap or any incident happening which is beyond the control of the physio okay so the physio has to be safe you just can't take a tele rehab session going on a whatsapp video call and talking to the patient okay that's that's the idea which many people have i can just call the patient and charge the patient what i would normally charge and get the exercises done on a video call no it's it's not going to work you have to keep yourself safe as a practitioner okay i have added some articles in between so this is like a article which was done in south australia at adelaide at the uh, university of south australia it's like learning from covid-19 to improve access to physiotherapy and this article is from last year i think it was around july last year when it was published so obviously the data collection was done much earlier by june so it was mainly march april and may june four months of data collection and the conclusion of this article they said that uh, obviously during a difficult time like covid 19 uh doing a tele rehab session uh is is proven to be very useful because instead of not doing any exercise if a patient has some sort of a you know virtual experience with the physio even that helps instead of not doing anything so the conclusion of this study said that yes in a safe atmosphere it is obviously very very what you can say uh, useful and it can be carried out you know effectively so what are the decision factors which we need to take before you do a tele rehab session you know which you have to incorporate into your session there are a number of factors which we can actually look into 
So I have divided them into five or six types like clinical. You have to be understanding that in short, there is no difference between a face-to-face -face session and a video session or a tele rehab session. As a physio, you should consider that, that I am seeing my patient in front of me. That is a mentality you should have when you go for tele rehab session. You should not be relaxed saying that I'm sitting at my home, patient is at his or her home. I finish the session in 20 minutes or half an hour. I take my charges and I can go away. No, you cannot have that sort of a mentality. You are responsible for your patient's care. So basic mentality as a physio when you go for a tele rehab is you should be seeing the patient as if the patient is in front of you. I know you cannot keep your hands on there. You cannot control the trick movements. You cannot do an assessment properly, but it's all in the mind. If you train your mind that yes it is a face-to-face -face consultation your consultation will be better if you take the consultation like a video consultation you'll be relaxed you will be ignorant and you'll be negligent which we don't want that want to happen okay it should be practical also so in terms of technology uh in, at both the ends that the physios end and the patients end the technology has to be very you know compatible in terms of, i already told you in terms of your wi-fi in terms of your background in terms of your vision or your or in terms of your you know auditory responses it has to be very much uh, convenient for the physio and it has to be convenient for the patient quality the quality of technology which i just mentioned safety now safety is a big big thing overseas uh i'm not saying that in india safety is not important because obviously things in india are improving than what they were you know maybe 10 or 15 years back but safety is really really important for tele obsession because there have been incidents when the you know physio has taken a tele obsession and the patient has landed in trouble because they could not control the session maybe in terms of your vitals if it's a cardiorespiratory patient in terms of a balance strategies if it's a neuro patient in terms of trick movements, if it's a musculoskeletal patient, example, I said, like, you know, scapular dyskinesia, you cannot correct the scapular dyskinesia on a video consultation. So your patient will keep doing all the wrong movements. And at the end of, say, three or four consultation, your patient might question you. See, I've paid you for four sessions. There is a difference. I still am moving my shoulder in a wrong way. So you can't tell the patient it's a video consultation. So I can't control your movement. So that's why the result is less. You can't say that you are answerable to the patient. So in terms of, you know, safety or quality, uh, yeah, there are a few drawbacks and you should be considering all that when you're actually, you know, going into a consultation like. Uh, trust as well. Now, trust is a very broad word. It's obviously trust cannot be from one end. Trust has to be from both the ends. And for the trust to be better, uh, I would normally recommend that the physio should be making sure that you have somebody else at the patient's end. Now, here in Australia, what we say is we try to have a social worker. So if the patient is staying alone, we normally tend to have a social worker or a carer who can be there at the same location where the patient is there. So if something goes wrong, that person can help. Okay. If the patient is staying in family, you can have somebody from the family, maybe husband or wife, or maybe you know, father, mother, or daughter, son, whoever is at home, somebody has to be there with the patient. It is going to make a huge difference because the patient feels more safer. Uh, the patient feels more answerable sometimes. So sometimes the patient may be you know, negligent if he or she is alone. So when you have somebody at the patient's end, whether it's a family member, whether it's a carer or a social worker, the patient becomes much more, uh, you know, a sort of uh, uh, aware that I cannot do what I want to do because I'm answerable to the person who's next to me. So you, can, you should always make sure these things are taken care of in terms of trust. Okay. In terms of ethical principles also, like uh, in terms of, say, uh, exposure, patient exposure, you have to make sure this is, we take into account even in, say, face-to-face -face consultation that the part should be adequately exposed. Simultaneously, you don't want to overexpose the patient, which is not required. And in a tele-rehab session, this is more important because tele-rehab sessions can also be recorded. So you have to make sure that the patient is well, what it can say, uh, taken care of in terms of his privacy. Like privacy is a big thing. You don't want to expose a patient's uh, rest of the body when you're only working the shoulder. So you can have a vest. You can have a, ask the patient to use a bed sheet or a towel to cover his chest when you're working the shoulder. You don't need the entire body there. Okay, so make sure that the patient's uh, privacy is respected because nobody wants to be in you know negative side of things, especially if it's a video consultation and it's recorded. 
uh, adhere to the ethical principles and uh, this is i think uh, one of the oaths which you take on your graduation day or your convocation day that we say a oath that i will practice physiotherapy to the best of my skills and knowledge uh, expertise and into account the respect and dignity of the patient. So even a tele rehab session, you have to follow all the ethical principles. You should be safe. Person does not have experience in teleconsultation. You basically start with a individual session with one person. As experience uh, builds on, maybe you have ten sessions, fifteen sessions done with different patients, and you understand the problems in tele rehab. That's when you can do with maybe two patients or three patients in terms of group rehab. Otherwise, don't go for group rehab because you won't be able to control what the patients are doing in a group session. Uh, another article here, and this is taken from Melbourne, University of Melbourne, and it says that the physios and the patients rapo, uh, no, report a sort of a positive experience with telehealth during the COVID-19 pandemic. And even this article, if I'm not wrong, was taken last year. So late last year. So the data collection, again, is the first six months when the actual COVID started. And uh, there was a positive experience reported by both the sides that even the patient's ex experience was that it was very positive, that tele-rehab was helping them to maintain the amount of activity or in terms of their fitness with the physio rather than not doing anything. Because, you know, when lockdown happens, you cannot actually travel anywhere. And if you're living in bigger cities, for example, in Mumbai or Delhi or even Pune, you cannot travel for say 15, 20 kilometers for a physio consultation in a, you know, in a pandemic because you want to be safe. You can't expose yourself to the virus during a lockdown. And similarly in Sydney or Melbourne, you have to be very careful with you know, going for consultations in hospitals or clinics because the chances of getting exposed to the virus are higher in hospitals and clinics rather than you know in open air. So you have to be careful with that. Though the article, the physios also mentioned that because of all these drawbacks of face-to-face -face consultation, tele rehab was really, really useful for them to uh, administer their service to the community. Uh, being a musculoskeletal physio, uh, myself and even uh, Dr. Ronald here, we, we are more into musculoskeletal practice. I can't miss an article which does not talk about MSK physio. And uh, this article here, in terms of tele rehab session for a musculoskeletal session, uh, address a few things which are talked about, like how we say cardiac rehab, you cannot control the vitals. In terms of neuro rehab, you cannot control the balance issues. In an MSK physio session, you cannot control the trick movements. And trick movements is something is a big thing for us as MSK physios. You want actual, you know, active movement or passive movement happening at the joint rather than any faulty movement or any compensatory movement or any trick movement from the patient. Now, these cannot be controlled at, you know, tele rehab session. So as MSK physios, your main uh, challenge is to make sure that the moment which you want to achieve at the patient's end is as close as possible if it was a face-to-face -face consultation. You won't get 100% same moment. And you have to accept it that, you know, a face-to-face -face session, if you wanted to mobilize the shoulder or if you want to check the active movement of a shoulder, you know, say, adhesive capsulitis or a frozen shoulder, you can stand at the patient's end and control the shoulder, control the scapula and still get a proper movement in a face-to-face -face session, but it's not going to happen in a, a virtual session. So you have to accept some drawbacks that as an MSK physio, I'm going to have a few challenges. You won't be able to mobilize a joint. So any passive maneuver, which you want to give, you won't be able to deliver in an MSK physio tele rehab session. You can only deliver what the patient can do actively. So you have to then recognize in your patient. So even for y'all, many of you are in fourth year, third year, and a few interns, if I'm not wrong. If you want to start a tele rehab session, touch wood if there's a third wave sometime in India, which I hope there is not, and you want to see a patient, you have to make sure if it's your initial consultation, you have an idea of what the patient wants. So if the patient wants mobilization, you cannot do anything. So don't take such a patient for a tele rehab session. Okay. Now, ethical principles is a very, very important thing, and it's uh, more important overseas. Uh, India is also getting there in terms of ethics now, uh, though there's a lot of, uh, what I can say, malpractices happening, and it happens everywhere across the globe. It's not only in India. So you have to make sure, as I said, the background has to be good. Your 
uh, noise has to be taken care of your you know vision has to be clear both for the physio and the patient which has to be a plain decor so example if you see my decor at the back i've taken a proper wall setting here i'm not taking a background if i could sit on the the chair at the table which i have in front you will see the balcony and you see what's outside which might distract you so i have not taken a background which is uh, open to you to get distracted you should always take a background which is covered so you can use a you can use a say a sort of a artificial backdrop or you can use a wall okay that's really helps so you should be basically distracting your patient from other things good lighting is really important so the patient should be able to see the physio clearly the physio should be able to see the patient clearly and likewise okay uh, you should be having access to the clinical equipment which is required during the video consultation so it can be say obviously you can't you can't think of having a stethoscope because you're not going to use the stethoscope there you can't think of having a pulse ox because you will not be able to use the pulse ox you can't think of having a goniometer because you won't be able to use a goniometer so what is the alternative so alternative we say is example if it's a msk patient you will use a eyeball goniometry observation so you're going to ask the patient if it's an elbow patient. I'm making it simple now. If it's elbow patient and having some sort of a restriction in terminal extension or towards terminal flexion, you're going to see at the start of the session, this is a range of motion for the patient now. At the session, you will ask the patient to say a few activities. Say maybe you're going to ask the patient to do say a hold relax or contract relax PNF technique or going to give the patient some dumbbells and to ask a patient to extend with a dumbbell or you're going to give the patient say some mulligan glide, say a lateral glide to the elbow and ask the patient give a lateral glide to the elbow. Now do the movement, try and flex, 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 try and extend, extend, extend. Do it say three, three times as per the rule of three for mulligan and you reassess. You, it's again observation. You'll observe that the range is slightly better or if, this is, if the patient says uh, range is same, I'm still feeling stiff, but the pain is lesser. So that is an observation for a tele rehab. And the reason it has to be an observation because it's a virtual uh, thing. You cannot measure it with a goniometer. Obviously, you can take the pain. Pain assessment is not going to be affected much because you will still ask the same question. How much is the difference in pain you will produce in a tele rehab is your skill. It's not that I won't say that uh, tele rehab session, you won't be able to produce a difference. That you can still produce a difference. For example, if you use the right technique correctly, you will still get a difference in the patient's pain in a tele rehab session. So obviously skill is a very, very important thing. Your experience in using such platforms like a tele rehab thing. Because see, your, you people generation is a more social generation. You people use so many apps. You people use so many different social platforms. Now, example, myself and Dr. Rona, we were batchmates. If we go 20 years back, we did not have anything of these platforms. We did not have LinkedIn. We did not have this Instagram. We did not have Facebook, all this. We don't have that. In fact, we didn't even have a mobile. When we were graduates or when you were studying physiotherapy, we didn't have a mobile phone. So things have changed now and uh, things have become more practical. The generation today is more skillful, I'll say. I still believe that this generation today is more, uh, what I can say, more ready to accept change. And that is a good thing for you know, the physiotherapy profession for all, all of us. Uh, we should also be seeing differences in activities involved. So you should be informing the patient what is a video consultation. This should be done prior to the sen uh, session. You should be telling the patient of a safety before a session. So this is a dummy session which I talked about. You should tell the patient all these things that you should be making sure what is a video consultation patient knows. You should be taking care of the safety. You should be taking the care of the needs. You should be giving the patient an emergency number. So here I give the patients the number 000. Triple zero is the emergency number for New South Wales Health. So if the patient feels he's not feeling well and is no one at home, I tell him, okay, you have a mobile phone there. Give a call to 000. Let's be safe. In India, you'll be having emergency number for your immediate, uh, you know, nearest hospital. You have to make sure that the patient is covered safely. You don't want to get into any trouble. Okay, because tele rehab session, how effective they sound, you also have to be safe. Okay, so the care has to be effective and safe. Uh, you should also be notifying the patient, like what is the care going to be before the session, at the time of the consultation, and what's going to happen after the interaction. So obviously, we'll need some outcome measure in terms of pain or range of motion for MSK patient, in terms of balance for a neuro patient, or in terms of your uh, difficulty of breathing. For a, a, a respiratory patient. So you might be teaching a patient, say, ECBT technique or breathing exercises or diaphragmatic breathing. Or maybe you're teaching the patient, say, coughing and huffing. 
making sure before the session, you know how the patient feels in terms of his breathing. You are not going to be able to auscultate here, the lung. So what we want to do is uh, during the session, when you teach the ACBD technique or you teach the patient coughing, huffing, at the end of the session, you'll ask the patient to cough or you'll ask the patient to huff and you are going to ask the patient, put it or dump it in a container. Amount of what you can say secretion you get during the telerehab session obviously is the effectiveness of the session. So this is outcome measure. The same way as you use for a face-to-face -face consultation. Only difference in a face-to-face consultation as a cardio recipe physio, people who are cardio recipe experts here, uh, you will be able to see a difference in terms of your auscultation of your lung. In a telerehab session, you won't be able to auscultate. So what you want to do, you'll only ask the patient, are you feeling better? Is the lungs feeling more lighter? Are you feeling any difficulty or shortness of breath? Can you show me the secretions? Like I know it sounds very, very, very dirty. The patient will show you secretions on a virtual video call. This is the secretions which I got, but it has to be that way. Okay. Now, uh, the laws are more specific to Australia, which I put because most of my content is taken from the Australian Physiotherapy Association guidelines, and we follow strict guidelines here. Uh, so it's not that a guideline is restricted to country. Guidelines can be used in multiple countries and many a times European and Australian guidelines are nearly the same. A bit of difference up and down because every society is different. US is slightly different and India definitely is a bit different because many a times in India, we tend to overdo things. We are more theoretical. So many a times we don't follow guidelines in terms of the practical hands-on exposure. Like, So when you use this, we are bound to rules of a state. So example, if I'm in New South Wales or Sydney, if I relocate to Melbourne tomorrow, my guidelines will change because I will follow what's for Victoria. In India, does it change? If I'm in Maharashtra, if you go to Karnataka tomorrow, will the guidelines change? Not really. It's going to be more or less the same. So in US, it changes also because I have enough students and friends who practice in different states in US. And they say, obviously, the guidelines, even for tele-rehab session or a face-to-face -face session, they change between different states. Europe also is the same. If you are in UK, uh, in England, the guidelines will be different. If you go to Wales, if you go to Scotland or Ireland, the guidelines are slightly different. Not very different, but there is some amount of a difference which they have in the individual guidelines. Uh, another thing which is really important as a physio here overseas is we have what is called as a professional indemnity insurance. So I should be covered by insurance. So tomorrow if I'm taking a consultation and something goes wrong, if the patient is a notorious patient and he charges me for some charges against me, I should be able to cover up my insurance. So we have a professional indemnity. We don't have professional indemnity. I am not too sure how it works well in India. Many of us are not aware of it. Definitely, there'll be something which uh, health insurance companies offer. But professional indemnity is not that much uh, highlighted in Indian healthcare practice so far. That's what I understand, at least till five years back when I came here. Okay, so we at uh, Australia, we make sure that our guidelines are like as a uh, Australian Physiotherapy Association member, we should be covered for telehealth practice and I'm covered as a member of APA uh, for any telehealth rehab sessions, which I conduct, I'm covered by the APA, you know, the funding. And if there's something notorious, which happens on the patient's end that he files some charges, I will be accountable for by my professional indemnity. Okay. Uh, another thing which is really, really important, which I haven't mentioned here, is the billing. So the patient should be aware of how the billing happens. A billing, it cannot mean like in India, patients might bargain that face-to-face -face session I'm offering you for X amount. So for face to uh, virtual, it should be half the amount. Many patients might say that it should be cheaper. So it is for your quality and your skill. You should be able to keep your standard and say that even if it's a... Uh, uh, you know, uh, online virtual consultation, I'm spending the same amount of time. Okay, I might not produce the same amount of difference as a physio because a physio is a hands-on skill. You will obviously have a lesser difference in a tele session, but it is better than not doing anything, right? So you have to make sure the billing is taken care of and the patient knows what are the consultation charges. If the patient is covering it by insurance, the patient might say, I'm covered by so-and-so X insurance or Y insurance in India. Is that company going to pay for tele sessions you should be knowing all that okay because tomorrow you don't want the patient to say my insurance company is you know not ready to pay for your tele rehab so you should uh, reduce your charges you cannot ask the you cannot expect the patient to, you know to be certain amount patients can present in different ways okay i hope everyone's there not feeling sleepy uh what are your physio's responsibilities so you should be basically having uh, to provide the session in a very effective way. 
you should also be mentioning the patient any out of pocket charges if there be anything required so example if you are doing shoulder rehab <clears throat> you have to tell the patient i will require you to get a theraband i will require you to get dumbbells i will require to get uh, say another say so not a dynamometer but you can say i might require any other tape suppose so these are out of consultation charges so the patient should be aware he'll need to pay for his theraband or the patient needs to understand that i am i might need to pay for the tape so these have to be well well uh, communicated to your patient before the session starts consent which i've already told recording okay now this session is recorded so each one of you who is present here and myself or well, nearly 50 of us here we have given a consent to zoom to record the session so you should be aware that when your camera is on you are in a safe atmosphere and you don't uh, you know promote any visual uh, sort of a feedback which might be disturbing to you or for the crowd who is watching going to watch the session so i might upload this tomorrow on my channel so you should be aware that your recording was taken and it's going to be uploaded on a youtube channel at say physioed so that consent that consent has to be there okay uh if the family member is present during the consultation they should also be aware that the session is recorded and they will be recorded also so you have to be very very careful of consent and you don't want to face any charges from the patients and it does not happen much in india but in overseas a uh, patients can sometimes turn uh, a bit uh, tough for you so if you don't take a proper consent or if you don't take consent from the family member you can be in some sort of a dicey position after a few weeks if you have uploaded the video somewhere okay uh so it's important that the physio considers uh, the skill obviously uh, see physio is a uh, hands on practice you will start your practice now even what i was 10 years back even what i was 4 years back when i left india 2018 i had experience of nearly 12 years that time what i am today i'm definitely a bit, i'm much more confident i'm much more better in my approach it's not that because i've come overseas that's why i learned a lot i will still believe that indian education is the best you are very very fortunate to be having good professors at your institutes and we have very good exposure in terms of a patients or clinical exposure which we don't have overseas it's very poor exposure in terms of you know clinical hands on experience like example you people have a government hospital so that's wonderful meaning you are having exposure to different sorts of patients now if you go to a private college like not having a attached hospital it gets a bit tricky you don't have that amount of exposure so the same applies to tele rehab no difference if you have more experience in terms of tele rehab sessions you will get better so how do we do it how do we get better the main thing is do a dummy call you and your uh, best friend you can have a tele uh, rehab session on whatsapp call with each other on video call and you act as if you are the patient and you act as if you are the physio do practice with on each other practice with your neighbors practice on your family with tele rehab try and ask them feedback after the session do you feel that actually made some difference or were you finding it laughing like so unless you practice a lot like just like how you practice for your exams you do special test upon each other right you do assessments upon each other you do you do limb length measurements you do cardiac assessments you do your neuro assessments upon each other before the exam you do exercise therapy in a second year practice stretching upon each other so similar like your physiotherapy techniques tele rehab has to be practiced upon each other first unless you practice it upon each other you can't directly go to a patient on a tele rehab you will be very poor okay and and believe me tele rehab the feedbacks in the social world on linkedin or practo on google if you have a few negative uh, comments on your tele rehab session you will not be getting a lot of clients in the future so you have to make sure whenever you start tele rehab you have some practice already okay uh you have to take care of the client safety i already mentioned many of these points are repeating you have to make sure the false risk have to be taken care of Uh, you have to make sure that the vitals are taken care of so i have shown examples of your blood pressure vitals your pulse ox now these are very difficult for a cardiac rehab in a tele rehab it's really really difficult you can have the patient do a pulse ox just put the probe on the finger what is oxygen saturation before the session say 90 odd what is oxygen saturation following the session 90 odd or it's better much improved so we get a feedback can you ask the patient to measure the blood pressure on itself uh, it's going to be a bit tricky because the patient might not be able to use the blood pressure monitor himself but easy to document devices like a pulse ox you can still use if the patient has a pulse ox at home and you are a cardio rsp physio okay innovations like uh, it's now become a generation of apps so you have so many healthcare apps now so 
it can just be a zoom platform it can have many more apps india is very much a techy nation we have our engineers doing wonderful jobs in the last one and a half year the amount of apps which have come in healthcare the amount of competition if you see there's a lot of competition between different apps so you can see yourself at different apps i myself seeing for an app for my platform at physio ed i don't want to be dependent upon instagram and facebook i want my app to be uh, ready in terms of exposure to my uh, clientage and my clientage will be obviously students so you should be aware of how the generation is going ahead you can't be sticking around with your old ideas so i can't stick around with my ideas which me myself and sir did around 20 years back if you will be you guys will term as outdated so we have to evolve you have to learn you have to try and get better and say example if i say instagram i did not know how to use instagram before i started physio ed 6 months back i started my own platform 6 months back today i'm addicted to instagram i'm there on instagram all day to promote for physio ed and to connect to more physios to make it a much more for social experience for us to develop the profession or to develop uh, in a physio ed to deliver sessions to physios across the country so you have to have a telehealth uh, coaching you should be aware of various apps you should be able to demonstrate videos so this is really important so if if you are showing some technique to a patient you can also have a youtube video at the side and tell the patient see this is what i want you to do look at the video how is the patient moving the shoulder this is the way you want to move or if you ask the patient to do say uh, finger lad exercises you can have a youtube video going on at the side or you can do it yourself and show the patient how to do the finger lad or how the patient to do pendulum exercises on corbens exercises you have to show it so the patient knows what he or she has to be doing okay or uh, there should be documentation in terms of tele monitoring or e visits in terms of say emails between you guys you should be aware of what you want to uh, communicate because each and everything has to be documented make sure that it's not a only video consultation you have to have a proper documentation on the email because you have to cover yourself okay <clears throat> it is also useful to make sure that uh, you test the quality of the video you test the quality of the audio before the session you make sure the patient is aware of the session you make sure that patient has adequate break so example i am talking with you people if i keep talking for one hour by the end, <laughs> middle of the session or late of the session you guys will not be having concentration so this was what i used to normally tell my students when i used to lecture i will take the session only for 40 minutes or 45 minutes because the concentration of the human mind is maximum only for 40 minutes no matter how good the speaker is or how good the students are no human mind can concentrate at a thing for more than 40 or 45 minutes maximum so you have to make sure that the session is short and it's to the point okay you have to address the situation or the scene to the patient uh, family and you have to address it to the caretaker that this is a session you have to make sure the patient is safety you stand behind the patient control the patient if the patient is going to fall you stand behind hold the patient these things have to be explained to the family member they are not going to dream you have to explain so you should have a dummy call with the family member also more important for neuro patients so if you are doing balance exercises you can't have a tele rehab session without a carer because you want the patient to be safe so you should be having a dummy call to the patient's family and saying i want you to protect the patient from falling so these things are really really important you should be having an outcome measure as i said for range of motion for the elbow when i showed so you should be able to test the patient's uh, range of motion obviously you cannot measure it with a goniometer but you can observe it right or you can ask the patient do you feel it lighter do you feel it easier to move how is the pain so these are outcome measures which a patient will report so we have we call it as prom so patient reported outcome measures or patient reported experiences uh your mobile phone should be uh, you know easily be uh, approachable i'm sitting here with my two phones if there is anything happening so if there is a breakdown of wifi i should be able to contact vinanthi right away right so there is a breakdown of wifi at my end so can you connect me again so you should be approachable to connect to the right person at the right time so you should be able to address also so example today session is tele rehab i should be able to address you how this session is going to help you maybe not right now students but definitely when you go ahead and practice and uh, see tele rehab is not going to go away so if you say tomorrow india is not going to have a uh, zero cases of covid which is a dream 
uh, you should be still you able to use a telehealth consultation because your practice will only blossom when you're socially active. Uh, physiotherapy is a social networking platform. You have to have contacts. You should be networking with different physios across the country. That's how you communicate. So I encourage my students even now is instead of being more active on platforms like you know your social networking sites, be active on platforms like LinkedIn, professional backgrounds, which will help you to develop your practice or your consultation. So after consultation, you should make sure that the patient has been safe. You, you should also be checking whether the recording is proper. If there's any abnormal instance in the recording, you should be deleting those clips in the video recording. If you're showing a demonstration, you can obviously share the demonstration with the patient so the patient can see it again. It's more like a feedback, more important for say a neuro patient. If your patient is going to see the video again, again, he's going to learn it better, okay? <clears throat> Uh, software, I have talked about it, smartphones, laptops, uh, apps, very, very important. And uh, it's a because I see a lot of my students using a lot of apps and they send me a request, uh, like, you know, connect with us on my app. It's not possible for us to actually do that. So using communication equipment, this is really, really important as well. Are you able to hear me or is any, because my Wi-Fi is breaking down between, okay? So Vinanti, just let me know if I'm breaking down, okay? So you use a microphone, use a wireless extension, you might use your hands free because you can't, you can't use a, this sort of a, now this gadget when you're doing an exercise. So you need to have your hands free on. So these gadgets are really going to help your consultation to get better, okay? You should be doing pre-testing. You should be doing post-testing of the audio-visual communication between you and the patient. Making sure that the audio is fine, a proper headset. Like example, I said, earphones, they should be hands-free. They should not be using direct links like a cord because you, you the patient won't be able to exercise them, okay? So these were the main guidelines which I've used for the session. So mainly the guidelines which I use, you can also go online and refer to these articles which I've sh shown here. Obviously, I'll share the presentation later. And if you just type Australian Physiotherapy Association Telehealth Guidelines, which were published last year, you'll get the entire PDF for yourself. So you can refer that when you're getting back to your uh, tele-rehab session. That would be really, really useful. So thank you. I would invite questions, questions from the staff, faculty, students, Post. Thank, thank you, sir, uh, for such a beautiful webinar. Sir, uh, we had a question about the progression during the telehealth. Mm -hmm. There was a question yeah. about the progression. How are you going to progress? Okay. So pro yeah, so this I can say in terms of your outcome measure what the patient reports to you. So if the patient says that I had a session with uh, say Dr. Vedanti and yes, I have a range of motion which is improved at my shoulder. Say I could only flex so much. Now I can flex up to so much more. Then that is a progression for you. So you know for your next consultation, you should be increasing the exercises or you should make it more vigorous. Say maybe more amount of weight when you're doing a cordomance exercise or maybe you can use uh, active assisted also. So you can ask the patient instead of doing this much, now use your other hand and push it further. Use more pressure, use more pressure. So progression is what you're going to see on the screen. You will see it on the screen on your computer, or your app that yeah, the patient is showing some amount of difference. See, you're not able to go into measure. You can't do a goniometry. Okay, you can't do auscultation as i said you can't do a balance test for a neuro patient on a video consultation so what you can see is a patient standing okay static standing is a patient standing proper how is the you know what you can say perturbation is a patient swaying more is a patient swaying less now yes patient is swaying less so that is a progression in terms of recipe patient if you had the first consultation and you felt the patient is feeling short of breath in between the consultation Maybe after two or three sessions, the patient's shortness of breath might be, you can just see it on your video consultation. It's getting slightly better. So progression, yeah, it is tough to actually say on a tele-rehab session how we measure it, but yeah, it's more like observation, yeah. Thank you, sir. I hope- uh, I, would also, I would also like to add a point. See, many times what you people think is tele-rehab need not be all tele-rehab sessions. COVID has made us to travel less. 
not impossible we all are still going for dinners outside we all are going for movies also maybe outside so maybe you can't have a five consultations face to face with a patient but what you can do first session can be tele rehab second session can be face to face third session can be tele rehab fourth session can be face to face fifth session can be tele rehab what have you achieved you have achieved two face to face sessions in which you could correct the trick movements or improve the technique in which the patient is doing your treatment technique and you will have three sessions of tele rehab which will make sure the patient does not go to the community to expose himself to the virus right this is what the entire purpose of tele rehab right that you want to make sure the patient does not go to the community to expose himself to the covid okay uh, obviously tele rehab is blossomed much more than that so i have a few physios who are conducting practice in mumbai and pune and their their patient is in say you know nagpur or some regional area satara or somewhere so are they using it rightly yes because they are getting patients from different parts of the country and they are using their clientage to a better extent now this is not going to change people are going to consult from pune to delhi people are going to consult from kolkata to chennai and the reason is covid so covid has given us a different outlook that you need not restrict your practice so example if you are in miraj and you want to set up a practice in miraj you can still see patients in delhi you can see patients in chennai provided you do that properly that's the most important thing okay yeah thank you sir if any other questions uh, you are always welcome I hope I, I I hope Vinanti have not gone off to sleep because no one turned their video. Camera. No sir, no sir. Yeah, I request to oh. turn on their videos. No, it's all right. It's already over now, so people might have got up now. I'll see them <laughs> you know, scratching their eyes, putting water on their faces. <laughs> yeah, sir. We thank I, you. I, I, I'm. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. other informative uh, webinar uh, so sir uh, this was this was not a clinical session i mentioned this to you when we chatted about it it is not a clinical consultation it is more like a communication it's more like a skill so physio is a communication skill also communication skill obviously hands on is the main part but unless if we address these different domains you won't know how to develop your practice don't remain confined to a hospital physiotherapist i will go at 9 o'clock to hospital 1 o'clock i'll have my lunch box 1:30 i'll go back to the ward I will look I'll come out you won't grow okay you have to you have to think uh, diverse you have to think out of the box because if unless you think out of the box you won't uh, overcome all the people those who have started practicing physio before you okay i have example of two three very good students of mine they are doing amazing do i feel happy for them yes i feel happy for them do i feel envy of them sometimes yes <laughs> yeah why not i'm a human i might feel envy that i thought this person and this person is doing so well now why didn't i think of it why didn't i think that way? i i have i've been a mentor to that person and that person is doing amazingly well on social platform today i'm like why didn't i think of this idea i have been a mentor to that person so yes you have to take your profession in a sort of a competitive way don't be negative competitive be positive try and promote each other to grow not to pull each other down okay yeah fine yes sir thank you sir so sir uh, i would request gayatri uh, the cr of the third year to propose the vote of thanks i'll hand it over to gayatri yes good afternoon sir and good afternoon everyone on behalf of college of physiotherapy wellness hospital in miraj i gayatri guzar uh, would firstly like to thank our principal sir Dr. Pr Ronald Prabhakar, because of whom this informative initiative was possible, I'd like to specially thank Dr. Amritish Akre sir, who took time out from his occupied schedule to conduct a webinar, illuminating and enlightening all the young heads with his specialty in the field. Lastly, I'd like to thank all the staff members and students for being a part of this webinar. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Gayatri. Ah, uh, sir. So, uh... I we I know that we are running out of time, but sir, there is one more question in the chat sure. box. So, sir, yeah. uh, the question is: How can we overcome the language barrier during the? Uh, tele rehab or face to face also? Is this a general question or is it only in relation to tele rehab? I guess this is about the tele rehab. Uh, well, uh, I would recommend if there's a big language barrier. Uh, language barrier is a very 
native word so you can still understand hindi and marathi that there is not a issue there you can't have a spanish patient and you being from somewhere say china that's a big language barrier so language barriers in terms of yeah if there is a big language barrier it is going to be hard it's you won't, you won't have a effective session so try and make sure that the patient understands you so i told in terms of vision and uh, auditory sense if there is a language barrier try and make sure the patient's understanding of your accent is right if the patient is not going to understand you your session is not going to work out so yeah it it is a big barrier thank you sir i hope the question has been answered by the sir clearly so i thank everyone those who participated those who have joined for the webinar thank you so once again thank you so much for this is a therapy yeah, all the staff definitely. also and the students as well so sir should thank i so end much. the session yeah you can definitely and have a good thank day you. rest of you yeah